Hey, so today I'm going to demonstrate put a drive belt or place a drive belt on a Moe Hydro mower and I figure most changing the drive belt on most mowers is going to be about like this. So first thing you want to do, oh this is an anti about the motion drive belt, this is about you're going to be taking. So first thing you want to do, check how the old belt was routed. So if your belt's already broken, you might need to Google it and see how to route it. On one under down here, there's usually a sticker on Craftsman's, I think. Newer Craftsman mowers telling you how to route theirs. But let's see, so let's see. That's in this case that those bolts are gonna have to come out and that steering column's probably gonna have to be lifted up a bit, pulled back and lifted up because the belt, as you can see, goes both sides of it. There's the front pulley down there. Up there. And the back pulleys at the very back there. And then there's the tensional pulleys. And the this pulley that some of them is gonna be right there. So a movie is about a typical machine to change on the life belt on. This drive belt is not broken, but it's been slipping a lot. So first set the parking brake, and that'll take the tension off of the belt. There's a few mowers that do not have it, so it'll take the tension off the belt. Oh, and you won't be setting your parking brake if it's a old, really old-fashioned one with a separate brake and clutch pedal. You'll put down. You'll need to push down the clutch and put a clamp or something to hold it down. But this has a combination braking clutch like most modern ones. And if it does not, if it just has a brake, like a John Deere STX tractor that's hydro, just I'm not sure how you're supposed to loosen up those belts. I have to Google that because I don't know. But anyhow, now the belt is loosened. And let's see. So, let's see how to take it out. Alright, so in the case of the Murray, I'm going to take it off of the... Transmission pulley first, reach back there, and then it just lifts off on the mower behind us. Sometimes you might have to move, remove belt guides to get the belt off the pulley. Belt guides that are mounted beside the pulley. Alright, let's go underneath. Let's see here. Now I'll pull this belt back away from that pulley. And next we've got these um, pulleys here. They're probably going to have to be unbolted to get the belt off. Uh, now that that's loot and move from that pulley, we'll put back on the... Um, or we'll take off the parking brake so we make and unhook that spring. And we'll get those out. Alright, so this is going to be a 9 16th socket. I oh, admit I took the clutch off. Like, I might actually want to put it back on, I don't know. But take 9 16 socket in this case. I think these are usually going to be 9 16 And take out, actually that, that bolt is going to hold this tensioner assembly too. So I want to take that out last. Let's start with this bolt here. So unhook the spring. This tensioner spring. You're going to need to unhook it. I'm going to have to pause the video for that because it's... Takes two in. Alright, so this spring here, in this case, is gonna unhook. And I unhooked it from the hole down there. And now I'm gonna move that so I can try and get that bolt there out. So, as you can see, I'm gonna take both of these out because the belt guides are so close down the camera. Uh, it's difficult like your video things like this. this. To make it easier putting a um pipe. Go and do it together. So it might give you more leverage than your match it. There we go. Now this one's loosened up. So all these pulleys are gonna have to come off. You don't wanna forget how you round the belt. How the belt is rounded. Assuming that's round properly, it can be best to Google it to make sure they have to put the belt on and we it properly. I'd be confident that it was in this case, because this mower 
had sat for 10 or 12 years, according to the guy I bought it from. This tractor, so I suspect it was already. And of course, to do this job, well, it's like this is what it's all about. To do this job, you've got to take the mower deck off. If you've got, got a mower deck on it. I don't on this one, that's handy. Let's use this one to ride around on and haul stuff. Alright, so. I'm gonna pull off that pulley. I'm gonna put it right here at the back. I'll line them all up so I remember which side goes down and which side. Well, what, what, what arrangement they go in. What, which one goes at the front. And I put the bolts and the nuts out of the way. So this also holds the tent, the whole assembly here. This bolt does, so you gotta be careful it's gonna fall loose. Got no helmet mounts. That, that piece there might need to adjust that. I tried to put a stronger spring on this thing because the belt was always loose. I figure a new belt might do the fi fix this, you know. Because this belt is cranking. It's probably stretched. Alright, take out this bolt. I mean, you can take off that knot. It's not a bolt. Alright, now, this one. Comes off too. Got some spacers on it. You don't know how they go. And we got one more here. Just winding those up in order. Right. Now, I'll just take the bolt out of this one, the nut out of this one. And then we'll have the belt freed. I'm gonna have to put down the camera. My arm is aching now. Oh, this is like the squealing heavy coming from this. I don't really feel any. Much extra wear on the pulley though, so it must have mostly just been belt wear. There's a small pulley. It's funny how fast it'll go with this small pulley. Alright, so I'm gonna unwrap it, pull it around, down around the deck pulley. You try not to bend those too much, those belt guides, because this one I thought about maybe trying to get a deck for sometime so I can cut with it. Save. Squeeze it past this belt guide too. And there we go. And now we just got to get it around this the steering thing. Belt has to rub on those, I noticed. So we might can get it off from down here. Let's see, there's a pie one. Probably nine sixteenths bolts. And we might can get down there. I don't. Other companies might have other strict things in the way, but Moe usually has their steering column in the way on the wide body tractor series like this. Let me see. I'm not sure I might have to take off the cover up there to get to this pole. Let's see. Let me get out front of it. Look and see how I can get this off. Alright. So, let's see. I think I might have to take this cover here off to get back there. I might get reach down there though. It's like kind of like one half inch bolts, honestly. Yeah, that's what they are, I think so. There's one half, so I'll see if I can get that off easily. Oh, and this is a um, little trick for these mowies. Um, if you've got this, these brackets, usually one sticks up like there, and then one there, and nothing runs. So you can take one, bolt it on right here, and one the wire. So because Mo usually seems to have the wires hang down, and they melt on the exhaust pipe. Very bad engineering, but I found that'd be a good way to hook it up, hang it up. And I repainted this one. All right.
So let's see here. So I think we can stick this down this ratchet down in here and get those steering bolts out. Let's see. I inside the steering column or steering look shaft. So let me put down the camera and try to get those out. Well, I actually managed to get them bolts out from in here. You see, there's the steel on these motors. There's that right there steering shaft thing, and that can get in the way because the belt ones on each side. One part of the belt ones on each side. All right, now this I think pulls back, and then I can lift out. I don't know. This one has a hook on it. I don't know. Well, not exactly a hook, but then the Gigo has a part on the bomb that is not clogged and sticks out, keeps it from coming up. I wonder if I'll do all the movies like that. Yeah, you see right there. I think it might need to be swung back and then up. And you want to, when you put it back together, try to get that lined up so that when you have the steering wheel, look like it'd be straight. So the actual thing like steer straight. Okay, I'm gonna put down the camera. Actually, maybe I can put it down here so you can see what I'm doing. I think I can, yeah, kind of push it back and then swing it up. Let's see here. Not so I can get this to work. I don't know what I've done in the past. It's enough to swing really, but it's kind of in the way. Got a snap ring on that. I might take the snap ring off and try to get that deal. Deal. All right. Let's see here. So I'm thinking this. I'm not so, but it looks kind of like this gear has to come off in order to get that steering shaft out of the way, and it takes sna a snap ring pliers. So, with, if you have the snap ring pliers, snap ring is super easy to get off, but if you don't, it is not. Okay, thankfully it's not froze on the shaft. I can tell, but I don't know how easily this thing... Ah, oh, yeah. That's one easy gear to get off in. <laughs> if you have the problem. I'm sorry, I see my camera gave a terrible view of what I just did. What I just did was I took this gear. First, I took my snap ring pliers and took the snap ring out of the groove in that steering shaft, and then I just slid the gear right off. Came off easily. And now this lifts up and out of the way. Wouldn't you like it driving your mom with the steering wheel like that? So beautiful way to drive. Like that would be even easier. Okay. Let's see this bracket here came off. So this is what you steering this is what you have to unbolt. I don't guess I actually did have to unbolt it. Considering that I just took that gear off. But now you finally have that steering column thing out of the way. And you can pull your belt out. I guess. Alright, yeah. Let's compare it. Hopefully the first belt's a little bit shorter. Because this old one was prone to squalling. Mmm, bad quality. It looks longer to me. Well, I don't know, honestly. I, if it is the same, it's gonna slap and slap. I bet. The old one slapped like anything. Oh my, this is annoying. Because it looks longer almost to me. Well, that bottom part of the V is wider, so maybe it won't slip. Well, let's put it on and try it. Oddly enough, this looks like it would have a dirty belt because this isn't as thick. So it must not be as good quality. Although this one had shrank at the bottom over time, it looks like. And it was cracking. Well, yeah, look at that. When I had first gotten this tractor, I think the belt had just about no cracks on it, and in many spots it still looks nice. 
but I think that's just because the belt have been setting for about 12 years. Supposedly the motor had. Yeah, there was a lot of work I had to do. It was this cylinder. I still probably don't have good, that good a compression. Probably better now. But because there was rust and petting in it, I had to wire wheel head off. And I ended up having to change the hydro oil. I'll need to make an update video of this, Murray. Alright. What I've done on it. But let's try this new belt out. So. First step. And the installation of the new belt is to slide under here and let's squeeze it up into that assembly, that area where that steering shaft was. Alright, I'll feed it up into there. Oh, wait a minute. Look out for these wires hanging down. Yeah, that starter wire should not be hanging down into there. It looks like it is. Uh, right now, I'm hitting something. Probably the belt guys, because there's some little belt guys up here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll need to get the belt between them. So I don't have problems with my belt falling off. Now, pull down on the belt. Yeah, now he should be able to get around the pulley. There we go. Oh yeah, pull this back through here. Back up. Right. Squeeze it up here, and then pull on it some more. There we go. Feel good. New belt is in that pulley. Now, um, I don't really want well, I got to put back on the steering shaft. Let me see here. I think next I will go ahead and start putting back on the pulleys first. So, first it's gonna go. Um, don't need to check my videos to see where I well where the belt was well, I guess I believe I already remember. Um, let's see. This belt is getting twisted. Let me make sure it's not twisted. Put down my camera. Hopefully you're getting a good enough view. And pull this belt and make sure it's straight and not twisted. So I don't want to put it into the pulley twisted because then I'll have to take it apart again. I know which side face down on this pulley. I don't even remember. Probably. I think it must have been. This is the dirtier side, so it must have been this side face down. It don't really matter. Alright. See, so the rear back, well, the back end of the belt it goes on this. Oh my. Alright, so now, squeeze this one onto there. It's a long nut. Might be it's kind of stiff, honestly. And then, and then let's see if this one adds on easily. Or. Oh, yeah. So, I'm going to thread all the nuts. Well, I 
I can go ahead and tighten it up actually, I guess. Now can I put the nuts in place first? I mean, not the nuts, the police. Okay, so this one, the bottom end of the belt, right in this pulley. This one has all that space, so this part here that sticks up needs to go into that hole there. Because this supports the whole tensioner assembly. I better go and try and get this belt squeezed up there. And there we are where it goes. Now, let's see. now we can put this on. Let's get that belt into place and try and get it in there and then we need to pause it pause uh, the video all this stuff around here is covered with dust grime sort of on this tractor change the axle is covered with it let's clean it when I take it man off Alright, let's see, maybe you can see, I don't know, hopefully you can see the pulley. So I got all the pulleys bolted back on and the belt welded. Now I'm gonna put the tensioner spring back on. Hooks in right there. And then it's gonna hook into the hole down there. Let's see. I'm only really gonna break any video hooking that in. But so, I just do. I'm just pulling it really tight. I've got to take both hands. Pull it in there. Hook it into the hole. It's hard. Uh, it is difficult pulling that in by that point. Alright, now. Now I just need to hook it over the back pulley because it's in place at the front. Alright. Hook it into the back pulley. Got to put back on the park. Right. Like I said though, you want to take it off so you can get out on swing spring off if you're doing this my way. The pretty much all um, belt drive systems are similar setups. Apparently similar. I like how Craftsman um, puts a label telling how to out the belt or selling a diagram of it. On the bottom of their body pans, on their mowers. Don't think most companies ever did that. Alright, now. Try to get that belt pulled around that pulley. It's real tight, it's gonna need adjusting, it feels like. It's going to be loose when you apply, when you have the clutch brake pushed in and possibly on the right manage to get it on there. Let's see. I'll be fairly loose like this. Yeah, quite loose enough to slip. I do slip easily. It's certainly like be slipping. It ought to just come loose enough and fall off the pulleys almost. Okay, now. Might need some adjustment to let it. Loosen up a bit more. First, we'll just test it. First, let me check if it feels fairly. Yeah, it's fairly tight. Felt like they usually are kind of loose, but see the sides are just worn on this belt. It ought to work. Although I hope it holds up. And then it's thick down as that belt was. Older ones might be stronger. Okay, I gotta put back on my steering so I can steer this thing. 
First thing you put back on this plate, hit this little bracket here. And then there under the belt. Alright. Gonna tighten those screws up. I'll pause the video while I take You don't it. have to take that off, I guess. If you've got the snapping pliers, you can just take this off. And some movies you could take. You can get this thing out. So taking that out without having to take off this piece here. So I don't know what's up with this one, really. I don't know. Alright. Get this taken care of. Alright, got that bracket in there. Well, that bracket for the steering bolted on. And you just slide back down my steering wheel and get it through the hole down there. Alright. Now, so the next step. So I want to make sure my wheels are lined up just about straight. So they maybe turned a little bit to that to the right. I don't really think they are. I think just about straight. So I need to put this just about straight too. I want them to line up good. Alright, so those are about straight. And those the steering wheel. These movies have pretty big steering wheels, don't they? Nice. Steering wheels lined up too. So both of those lined up real good. Now, I'm going to take this gear and without turning the position of the wheels or the steering wheel, I need to slide it up onto the shaft, steering shaft. See here and make sure the cogs are going to line up and a little teeth on the end there that engage the steering shaft that wheels wants to turn I need to try to get this about lined up wiggle it a bit so I get slid on there check out the alignment of it before I push it up all the way now I gotta get that little slot exposed and install the snap bang alright let me see that wheel got toned a little bit I think Still faces almost straight, don't it? See, looks good enough to me. Now, here we go. Let's get slid in and then the rest of the way. All right, now. So, I see there's a little slot, a little slot up there. Now this is the snap ring that goes in it. The problem with snap rings is they're easy to use, but you've got to have these snap ring pliers to use them easily, or else they're almost impossible to get on and off. So, <laughs> I am glad I bought these snap ring pliers, though they've came in handy a few times. They're not often, honestly, <laughs> but <laughs> it was a good choice. Alright now, there we go, got it into the slot there, and it holds on good way. See, these snapping pliers are convertible, um, so that when you, they'll squeeze when you squeeze the handles. So let me try squeezing that just to make sure it'll stay in place real good. There we go. Ah. Looks nice and it holds on good. Now they're coming off now. Alright now. So there we go. Now we got the belt right here. Don't seem to be striking none. Looks to be routed properly. Alright, so let me check. First just test it and then we'll figure out the problem of like, the declutching. Well, let the clutching pedal make sure that works properly because I couldn't tell, might need some adjustment. Well, to start, I'm just seeing how it drives. This belt is kind of, like I said, not as thick this way, so I don't know if it's going to be a strong, sturdy belt or not. But at least it's wire, so it shouldn't slip. Hopefully. Choke. Throttle. 
Hello? Oh, I put that like that so I wouldn't bang my head. Oh, no squawking. These hydros are so loud when they're cold. But it's not slipping. Takes off fast now. Oh wow, we can pop a wheelie. What's this? <laughs> oh, wheels do come off the ground a little bit. Cool. Check our clutch. Make sure this guys is good. Here's this and guys, all right. Um, I'll check. So I can make so sure because it was creeping a little. I'm not quite sure if this is going to and this engaging as far as it should. Inside down. I notice that's coming up pretty far. Let me see. Might just need a little bit of adjustment. Oh no, that now that is still loose there. So. Yeah, it's fine. We'll see if this belt lasts. The only thing I'm concerned about is the belt quality. I expect it's good enough quality. Uh -huh. Hey, get, a, get some gas spilling onto that cap. From probably coming out through the bomb. When I was driving after filling the tank a little too much, it seems to have kind of cleared it up. I can see in there better now. Let's see where my gauge is. It's real nice, these tractors, they put gauges on them. Gas gauges, but they are cheesy gas gauges. There's, what do you expect for a mower? Well, that's not bad. Looks like that'll be good. Let's um test drive a little more. I'll make a YouTube just an update video describing all the stuff I've done on this tractor. It's got a cool horn. These Murray Hydras are so fast. See? Change the move without stopping. Wow. Yeah, it's like a sport now. To this new ball.
These movies make great falling down noises, don't they? Sound like a gunshot. I don't know why, but the super low tone muffler on these tractors, um, see it down there? It backfires when you throw it down. I guess they're designed just the extra fuel to stand saying night in those. I don't exactly know why, but they do. We first had that happen with that one there. It always, well, it actually doesn't backfire when you thaw it down as much as this one does, but it does it sub too. And we thought it was just an issue with this engine until we heard this one does it too. I'm curious to see if my tractor over here, which has a post twin, but it does not have that muffler. It's got an old fashioned round post twin muffler. I'm curious to see if it'll backfire like that. But anyway, notice that. A new belt will enhance the performance of your mower. That's really impressed me. I had never known that it could so much until we did it up, put a new belt on that one because it broke. And I realized this one needed it too for sure. And the reminds me of the new starters that we've bought for the post twin engines. First time I saw one of those starters, the big, powerful new ones work, I was like, I never knew what a difference it can make. But definitely, if your mower struggles with a slipping belt and you can't get it adjusted, you should buy a new belt. I didn't used to know this, but with these V belts, the sides of the belt are what grip the pulley, apparently. They aren't even supposed to hit the bottom, which is why this has gotten worn thinner and that made it cause, cause slipping. Well, it did seem to help though, didn't it? So, yeah, that was how to change the belt on your Moe Moeo.